The Mutt Lang ACDC and Metallica trick next on Music Surgery with me, Dr. Bob. Hey you guys, quickly before we get started, please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. And don't forget to check out the Doctor's Lounge, my store, and the links to some great samples below in the description of this video. Two tricks, the same but one with a twist, done about a decade apart on two of the biggest albums ever made, Back in Black and the Metallica Black album. Let's get out the scalpel, open it up, and take a look. Okay, so this is a trick that they did on Back in Black and for those about to rock. Mutt Lang trick. I'm going to play you this simple groove without the trick. Simple groove, simple drum sounds. Now, what they would do is they would side chain the snare to a harmonizer 910. And they would program this harmonizer for the snare to be an octave down from the original snare pitch, and then they would program it to dive. So instead of pop, bop, it would be doo, doo. If you listen to Back in Black and for those about to rock by ACDC, you can tell that there's something else going on with the snare, but it's hard to know what that is because there was so little technology back, in, back then, but this is what it is. So here it is with this in. Here's what it's like by itself. With the snare in. Out. Now, that's probably too loud for... It's not that loud on the record. So let me just back it up so you can just hear a little bit. Let's back it off. Anyway, you can hear the in intended effect. I mean, without all the instruments in and a full mix, I would never know where to put it. Now, the funny thing is, is back then, probably around this time, the syndrome was created, which you all you all know this. Um, the syndrome made a lots of different kinds of electronic drum sounds, and it was really the first popular one that showed up on records. Uh, the beginning of "Let the Good Times Roll." <laughs> by the cars that's a syndrome this was a popular type sound for the syndrome as well showed up in a lot of pop music and disco songs so it's interesting that they didn't use this instead of something like that maybe it was harder to trigger maybe they didn't know about it maybe it was harder to side chain or whatever so i made a syndrome sample and Pitched it down and made it dive. Without it. You can tell it's just adding something interesting to the snare. Definitely some low end, which Mutt's famous for in snare drums. I mean, listen to uh, Hysteria, Pyromania. He very, I think he likes low-end snares because they stay out of the way of the vocal and the guitars. And just for fun, I took a Simmons drum sample. Which they later would have used stuff like that on Hysteria because technology had completely changed. And that sounds like this. Without. And that's no reverb or anything on it. I mean, I could even tune that lower. Now, 
there's definitely that much low end and that pitch of Tom in the um, hysteria snare drum for Def Leppard. Absolutely. I've heard it naked. And it's amazing how much low end is in that snare. Now, on to... Hey, man, why did you have Metallica on the thumbnail? Mutt Lang never recorded Metallica. Correct. But a similar technique, and this is one that Bob Rock and Randy Staub used on the making of the Black Album, uh, which is another great idea, super easy to do. Um, I've just got a simple drum beat here. I use some slate samples of the Metallica black samples. They kind of sound like it a little, not much. But here's this. And what Bob Rock and uh, Randy Staub would do would be to take a black beauty sample and pitch it down. So... Here is a Black Beauty. And they would pitch it down to where it's not so quite natural. And listen to the difference a pitch down Black Beauty makes to this drum beat. Without. With. You can immediately tell, even though this is raw and just a, a simple explanation of what these guys did, you can immediately tell the same thing in the Metallica Black Snare. There's something wonderful about it, but hard to put your finger on what's going on. It's There's so much type, top end, but there's, there's low end that doesn't sound like EQ low end. This is what they did. They detuned a Black Beauty. And at that point, they triggered. I mean, I don't know how they triggered. They may have had um, triggering inside of Pro Tools. I don't. I can't remember if that record was Pro Tools or it could have even been a four at drum trigger, something like that. Um, if it was Staub and Bop Rop, they were using the best te technology, absolutely. But fact, they used a Black Beauty and they do detuned it. Here it is, not detuned. It, it, it's such an interesting concept. So anyway, these type of samples detune to make your snare fatter, more low end, and it's interesting to see how they did it through the decades. But try this stuff at home. I'm doing it all the time to all kinds of tracks. And, you know, sometimes the older techniques still work great. And hats off to these guys for being so inventive in a time where it was much more difficult to try new ideas. If every little bit counts, this is a big one. Extra thump, slam, punch, whatever you want to call it to your snare drum. This can go for any genre, not just rock. Tuck one of these tricks under your snare or your kick too if you want. And you'll not only hear the difference, but you'll feel the difference. Thanks as always for watching. Give me some comment love and a thumbs up below and hit me at drbobmusicsurgery at gmail.com if you want to say hello or you want me to work on your music. Take care of yourselves and each other and I'll see you the next time the doctor's in.